Welcome to AQMD on the Air. I'm your host, Alan Caldwell. Today we have the Governor's appointee to the AQMD Governing Board, Dr. Joe Liu. Dr. Liu, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Before we get started, can you give us a brief overview of your priorities as a Governing Board member? Well, I think my primary goal is to make sure that we achieve our mission, and that's to protect public health from air pollution while being sensitive to the impacts that our decisions have on local businesses. Now, in particular, I'm concerned about the issue of environmental justice. Now, environmental justice has to do with the fact that our low-income communities and communities of color are more likely than others to have the worst pollution problems. And let me give you an example. We studied what happens with regard to cancer risk in our basin, and we looked at from the, the period from 1998 to 2005. And overall in the basin, the cancer risk went down 11 percent, which is really great news. I mean, it's a, a significant accomplishment. However, the low-income Hispanic communities of Wilmington and North Long Beach, which are right adjacent to the ports of Los Angeles and ports of Long Beach, the cancer risk in those areas went up by 17 percent. So they started off with the worst problem and their problems actually got worse. So if our most impacted communities are actually getting worse in terms of air quality, we've got a lot of work to do. And that is my highest priority as a board member. Okay. Well, when you talk about cancer risks, obviously that means health impacts. And I understand that the EPA is currently looking at lowering the ozone standard for this area, which is one of our major issues of concern. If you would, talk a little bit about the process and how lowering the ozone standard would actually protect public health. Well, in January of this year, uh, the United States Environmental Protection Agency proposed to strengthen our ozone standard for the nation's ambient air quality standards. Now, ozone is more commonly referred to as smog, at least ground level ozone. <laughs> and um, when, uh, when they did that, they were saying, we're going to tighten the standard by somewhere between 7 and 20 percent and establish two different standards, one an eight-hour primary standard that's for protecting public health, another one geared toward protecting sensitive plants and trees or ecosystems and as a cumulative seasonal uh, standard. Now, the idea is that the health studies have shown that the effects of ozone have had really um, greater effects on the plants and the people than they had, they had assumed in terms of the adverse uh, impacts. So the new standard is supposed to address those issues. Okay. Now, when we talk about implementing this new standard, um, what is the time frame? Is this a one, two year, three year process, or is this something in the immediate future? Well, EPA is moving really quickly. They said that they plan on finalizing the standard by August 31st of 2010. I understand that with this new ozone standard, it will protect public health. But uh, if you would, give us a little more detail about how poor air quality actually does impact the community's health. Poor air quality has been found to have many adverse health effects. And they range from premature death to cancer to neurological, developmental, uh, respiratory, and, and cardiovascular disease. You know, the type of impacts include everything from heart attack to uh, preterm birth, low birth weight, uh, like I said, cancer, and, and uh, a whole variety of things, including the worsening of allergies. Now, the problem is uh, particularly bad along our transportation corridors, and it's one thing that we're trying to address. Okay. Well, when you talk about the transportation cor corridor, you're looking at the highways, the roadways, and I understand there's a term called the near roadway effect. Can you tell me a little bit about what the near roadway effect is and also what's being done to address that issue? Well, what scientists have found when they've studied the issue is that the people who live work and go to school near a freeway or heavily traveled roadway are more likely to suffer the type of adverse health effects that are associated with air pollution exposure. Now, um, what they've published more than 200 studies finding that living near or working near or going to school near a freeway or heavily traveled roadway may be associated with such things as heart attack and, and preterm birth or low birth weight or uh, asthma and bronchitis and other uh, types of air pollution related problems. The idea is that we need to do something about it. Fortunately, we found that um, the farther away you get from those, those freeways or transportation corridors, the, the amount of pollution drops off relatively quickly. So the idea is to create buffer zones or reduce traffic congestion or find other ways um, such as uh, sound walls that, that actually serve as a barrier to air pollution or installing particular filters in homes near those freeways. Okay, it's very good information. Now before we finish off, I want to focus a little bit on the children. I understand that AQMD is working on a project that will allow filters to be put in schools to better protect children's health. If you would, tell us a little bit about the project and also tell us how that impacts 
uh, the children's health at the school? Yes, yeah, so we have a, a really great project that we did, a, a pilot project with elementary schools in this port area, the one I told you about that is so highly impacted. We chose three schools in that area and we installed particular filters, different type of particular filters in the classrooms to see what kind of effect it would have. We found that the particular filters were very effective in reducing particulate matter in the classroom up to 90 percent. And the good news is that the panel filters, which were the least expensive ones, were also the most effective. So this is a program that we're now looking at to expand and to really try to reduce pollution in the classroom for those children that are, are in our most impacted schools. Well, Dr. Liu, I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, I appreciate all of your leadership and your guidance, especially uh, for your fight for environmental justice. Again, it's an honor for you to be here, and I appreciate it. Thanks, Alan. My pleasure. And that's our show. Thank you for watching AQMD on the air and for helping us clean the air that we breathe.